it was nearly 10 years ago when the Edmonton Oilers would hit, literally, the lottery and hear these words. Which team has that combination? Edmonton. The Edmonton Oilers have that combination and have won the draft lottery. That's right. The Edmonton Oilers would win the lottery to draft Connor McDavid. Going into the 2015 draft, the Edmonton Oilers only had an 11.5% chance of winning. 14 balls put into a machine, four balls drawn at random, and whichever team had that combination of those four balls would get the right to draft first overall. And of course, the Edmonton Oilers did hold that combination with the lottery balls 5, 14, 6, and 1. The Edmonton Oilers would have the good fortune of drafting their next franchise player, Connor McDavid. And looking back on the last 10 years that Connor has spent with the Edmonton Oilers, multiple awards, MVPs, and in 2024, one game within winning the Stanley Cup. That's right, going to Game 7 of the 2024 Stanley Cup Finals. Of course, Connor McDavid, known for his goal scoring, his high IQ on the ice, his fast speed, and wow, have the Edmonton Oilers and hockey fans been treated to some of the greatest goals we've seen. But now we are going to play the What If game. What if Connor McDavid had been drafted and had played for one of the other NHL teams over the last nine and ten years? That's right. This is EA NHL 25 and my new series of Connor McDavid in the Matrix. He is going to play for all NHL teams one season, the 2024-25 season. And let's just see how he does with all these other teams. How many cups will he win? How many awards will he take home? Welcome to my new series, Connor McDavid in the Matrix. I hope you enjoy. Welcome back, everybody. Laptop Hound here on this Halloween day. Yes, it is October 31st. Ooh, spooky. Up here in Alberta, Canada. Welcome all in to the new series. Yes, as you saw in the intro before the video, or if you caught the last video, we have Connor McDavid in the Matrix on this Halloween day. You can even see the uh, Halloween poster there. One of the best movies of the 1980s, by the way. Welcome all in again, and this is episode number two. Highly recommended if you didn't catch the first episode yet, where I go into a little bit more detail about what I'm doing with this series. Maybe maybe go watch that one first, find that on the channel, and then come check this one out. But here we are, as we work our way alphabetically through the NHL. Seeing how Connor McDavid would do in the Matrix. And by the Matrix, I mean, how would he do playing for each of the NHL teams in 2024 2025? Look at him in that Boston Bruins uniform. Bruins fans, yeah, you must love it. Non Bruin fans, you're probably not too, probably not too fond of him in a Bruins uh, jersey there. Hmm. Again, rocking the uh, rocking the Boston jersey as a young kid. I always went for the underdogs. I don't know if you guys were like that. And, you know, in the late 70s, Boston was playing Montreal a lot in the playoffs. Of course, you had the Don Cherry coach, Boston Bruins. And um, I just always went for the underdog. And that underdog was the Bruins because the Canadians were a powerhouse back then. So uh, that's uh, that's my kind of history with Boston. I love the old school players from the late 70s. And then uh, kind of, uh, you know, being a Canadian, supported the Western Canadian teams, Vancouver, Edmonton, of course. And here we go, episode number two. As we saw in episode number one with Anaheim, 
Connor McDavid led the team to a uh, playoff berth. Yeah, he did. He led them to a playoff berth and uh, took them to the first round no further. They lost in game seven of that first round to the Vegas Golden Knights. So here you can see uh, Connor McDavid placed on the team. I always just put Connor off the Edmonton Oilers onto the team that were simming that episode. And I give that other team, you know, a seventh round pick, no other player in return. Injuries are off because we want these guys at full maximum ability and trades are turned off as well. No trades. Teams have to play out the season with whatever rosters they have. All of this is AI. I do not play any of the games. I let the AI simulate it all. Once in a while, we jump in in a crucial situation and each either watch the simulation screen or maybe even jump into a game to watch the result as well. But yes, Connor McDavid basically given for free to Boston with Pasternak, McAvoy, Marshawn, and Lindholm. Can he take Boston to the Stanley Cup? We will find out. He also has one Hart Trophy. He did win the Hart Trophy in the uh, Anaheim episode last uh, last show. It was a fun one to do. It was the first one of the series. Let's go into the Matrix with Connor McDavid as a Boston Bruin. So we're going to go in and uh, kind of fast sim the first game here just to see if Connor can get a goal in his first game with the Bruins. They're on the road. Uh, against the Florida Panthers. Let me know in, in the chat, who was your favorite childhood team? What team did you grow up supporting? You may have changed it along the way, but uh, as a young kid, kind of the, those first few memories of watching hockey, what team or player did you support? Well, Connor McDavid would get the scoring started here with a goal on Bobrovsky. So he is making himself quite at home here in Boston. 2-2 after one. Boston looking for a road victory. Shots are even at 16 apiece. And again, big shout out, uh, as I mentioned in the last episode, a uh, longtime teacher of over 30 years in the public school system, mainly high school social studies up here in Canada, and always uh, have been a fan of the sports video games, whether it's hockey, football, baseball, back in 2005. And if you know what I mean, you know what I mean, right? 2005 baseball, maybe the best baseball game made. Uh, the 2K football, you remember that one? One heck of a game as well. And so after retiring a couple of years ago, I thought, you know, maybe maybe I can do a little bit of streaming. You know, I've communicated before being a teacher and I like to talk. And uh, I've had some inspiration from some of the great EA content creators out there, uh, specifically 2 24 of course, there's uh, Tactic, there's uh, Sin for the Win, there's a lot of uh, people that have brought this game um, into the spotlight for hockey fans, and uh, they've kind of motivated me to try and get in that ring. Uh, if you support any of those streamers out there or any other streamers of EA NHL Hockey, leave in the chat there. All right, we... Uh, we, we are in the third period. Boston down by one on the road. Morgan Geeky is going to tie it up on Bobrovsky. 4-4, first game, opening game of the season. And Connor McDavid. You can't script this, folks. Connor McDavid in game number one looks like he might be the game-winning goal. And it is. Connor in the Matrix is going to help Boston win. The opening night game. Connor McDavid, first star, two goals, one hit. Morgan Geeky, also a couple goals. And Mr. Barkov for Florida, one goal and one assist. All right. Again, we're going to track as we play the series out. Again, going through the teams pretty much alphabetically, starting with Anaheim, working our way down to, I guess it would be Vegas as the last one. And yes, Utah is in the game in uh, NHL 25. Phoenix, Arizona has been replaced with Utah. So we'll check out, you know, statistics along the way. We might jump into a game along the way. And uh, I always like to jump into the odd game where Connor is going up against his old team in Edmonton. So once we get to that Edmonton game, I think they play them in maybe in February. 
We'll see how he does back at home in Edmonton. Boston off to a 10-5 and five start, so uh, definitely in the playoff chase here. We saw uh, with the Anaheim game series season, I should say, they got off to a really good start as well. So it looks like they do play Edmonton on the 19th of December. So let's go up to that game. We'll sim it out. And then we'll go up to January 1st and uh, check out the team statistics. Here we go. Connor, back in Edmonton. Of course, as you saw in the intro, uh, the whole draft lottery situation, I remember that situation really well back in April 2015. Man, getting Connor, not really, no one really expected it. I mean, Buffalo had the best odds, and then you had Arizona. Edmonton was number three on that list, and somehow he just, the lottery balls ended up in Edmonton. One nothing for the Oilers. Leon Draisaitl gets the only goal of the first period. The period number two, Adam Henrique. I think a good add for Edmonton. I think he's a very solid bottom six forward. Good face-off man. A lot of experience in the NHL. Edmonton up two nothing. Getting close to the end of the second period. All right, McDavid, one more period in front of the Edmonton fans. Will he provide a comeback goal here? Shots are pretty even at about 27 apiece. Yanmark gives Edmonton a 3 0 lead. And uh, shall we say the S word? Is it going to be for Edmonton? It will. A shutout on the board for the Edmonton Oil. Three stars of the game will be Stuart Skinner, 30 saves. Adam Henrique, one and one. And Leon Dreisaitl got the first goal of the game. So Connor and the Bruins, shutout in Edmonton. Again, if you didn't see the first period, um, I am coming from a affiliate with Out of the Park Baseball. I'm a Twitch partner right now. And I do a lot of streaming on Twitch. You can go check out the uh, Twitch stream where I do some live NHL as well. And you can check that out just by going down to the uh, that banner, going down to that site, that Twitch site down below. Give me a follow and uh, catch the Friday night action as I am uh, currently on a franchise based off the movie Slapshot. Yeah, from 1977, Reggie Dunlop. Lemieux, Hanson Brothers, all those uh, players in the game. And uh, I am, I've created the Charlestown Chiefs to see if they can win a cup at some point with some community-based players as well. Some of my community from Twitch have requested I create players for them, kind of that 1970s look. So, you know, the big hair and the mustaches and the tough physical appearance. And they're playing on the Charlestown Chiefs as well. So go check that out Friday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern on Twitch. Some of those videos are on YouTube. I've migrated them over so you can go catch the first few seasons here on the YouTube channel. Uh, but those are basically just the live streams that I brought over here. All right, here we go. We are on January the 1st. Let's check out how Connor's doing. Looks like he's doing pretty well. 53 points for Connor. 20 goals, 33 assists. Pasternak, 51 points. Brad Marchand, 38. And just, just killing it. In the entire league, let's see where he, he should be in the top five, I would think. Yeah, he's he's tied for first with Nathan McKinnon. Pasternak at 51. Leon Dreisaitl at 50. And Rantanen at 49. Just to kind of show you where uh, Connor is playing right now, just the AI lines. I'm not, I haven't touched any of the lines, any of the strategies, and letting the AI do all of that. And uh, right now, they got him playing, of course, with Pasternak and Marshawn on the wings. So not much else in Boston. You know, that second line is pretty much a third line on most NHL teams. So they uh, definitely are top heavy in terms of their first line, but he's getting it done. He is getting it done. The Bruins right now in first place 
in the Atlantic Division, 23 wins, 13 losses, and three overtime losses. Six points up on Ottawa, seven points on Detroit, Montreal, and Buffalo. Currently have the wild cards in the Atlantic. In the Metropolitan, we have the Rangers, Devils, Penguins, Hurricane as your top four. In the Central, it is the Wild, the Jets, the Avs, Chicago, and Nashville. And finally, in the Pacific, don't worry, Edmonton fans, even without Connor McDavid, Edmonton number two. Behind the surprising Seattle Kraken with 49 points. So there you go. That is where we stand on January the 1st. Let's head back into the Sims. And I think we'll just go up to, yeah, let's just go up a month. I want to try and catch uh, when they do play Edmonton again. They play them on the 7th there. So almost uh, within a couple of weeks. And this time they beat the Oilers 6-5 at home in overtime. Continuing to string some wins. Kind of roller coaster, win loss, win loss. And uh, on February 1st, 31, 16 and 3 Rangers, 31, 19 and 3 Boston Bruins. And as you can see on the screen, the Oilers are currently leading the Pacific. So both teams benefiting uh, from Connor being off the team or on the team. Again, I like to uh, create these weird kind of situations when I play video games especially sports video games. I did a Babe Ruth in the Matrix on OOTP where Babe Ruth played for all Major League Baseball teams last year, seeing how many World Series he could win. And most of those are on this YouTube channel, so you can go check those out if you're a baseball fan as well. All right, March 1st, Bruins, currently 31, 20, or 36, 21, and 3. First place, in fact, they're killing it. Nine points more than the Montreal Canadiens in the Atlantic. And Edmonton with 69 points are tied with the Kraken for the lead in the Pacific. Okay, let's go up to April, up to the Washington Capitol game. By the way, I love coffee. Coffee, all the way. Coffee is the fuel of many streamers. Am I right? Am I right? Maybe even this, the fuel of many watchers of streamers. Okay, uh, 44 wins on the season so far with a handful of games left. Six points up on the, the second place team and the Oilers are currently one point back of the Kraken in the Pacific. Let's go up to the Chicago game and see if we need to slow sim any of these because, you know, if the Bruins have a comfortable lead, don't need to slow things down. A couple shootout losses, a win over Buffalo and Montreal. And the Oilers, three points back of the Kraken. Locked up a playoff spot, though. And the Boston Bruins are nine points up. Yeah, they've locked it down. They have clinched the Atlantic title. Lose to Chicago, win over Pittsburgh, and in the final game, a shootout loss. To the New Jersey Devils. All right, let's go to the playoffs. In Connor in Anaheim took the Ducks to game seven of round number one. Let's find out what he can do here in Boston. As we will face off against division rivals, the Montreal Canadiens. So here is your playoff tree. Starting in the West, we've got the Avs against the Wild. Predators and Blues, Oilers against the Ducks. The Ducks. By the way, I'm using Vassies and Tic Tacs uh, Tactics rosters here, so they're pretty up to date. And Anaheim apparently has made the playoffs. And uh, Seattle is going to be uh, going against Winnipeg in the East. Pittsburgh against the Devils. We got the Rangers. Sends. Red Wings, another surprise there, going up against the Leafs and the Habs going to get against Boston and Connor McDavid. It will be Pasternak by one point 
that has the team lead in points. He wins a regular season point-wise, 122, 58 goals. Honor, one point behind. League-wise, uh, Pasternak's going to win the Art Ross, one point better than McKinnon and one point better than his teammate. Such a shame, Connor. One goal shy of 50 as well. Connor came really close to winning a couple, couple big awards, and he still might yet. No guarantee that the Hart Trophy is going to go to Pasternak. In terms of defensemen, let's go check out the points. Dale McCarr, who sims well in this game. A lot of assists, 87 points. Uh, Josh Morrissey, 79 for the Jets. 71 for Quinn Hughes, cover boy of this year's version of the game. And Adam Fox for the Rangers, 68 points. Goaltenders, 42 wins. Highest uh, win total in the NHL for Georgia from Colorado. Best save percentage up there with uh, Shesterkin. So Shesterkin, Georgiev in line probably for the Vezina. Saros up there with a 916 and Hellebuck with a 918. Best goals against average goes to Georgiev and Shesterkin. I guess one of those two will win the Vezina. All right, it is playoff time. Uh, with the playoffs in this series, what I will be doing is simming a few games ahead. And then if we ever get to an elimination game, we will slow sim it the sim screen so going to game number four we uh, suffer two losses and a win so two one for the Habs. so we can go ahead one more game we win that one we're tied up at two all right back home to boston for game number five or two loss so we are now on the brink of elimination Connor mcdavid Facing elimination to the Montreal Canadiens. Uh, Lindholm going to get Boston on the board early in game number six. Pasternak, Art Ross Trophy winner. 2-0 Boston. New Hook gets one back for Montreal. Boston opens up the lead. Zadorov, great signing, I think, for Boston. Very physical Good playoff type of defenseman. Did very well in Calgary last season. 3-1 Boston going to the second. 4-1 Brad Marchand. Boston's not going to go down easy. And it looks like Connor, for the second year in a row, is going to go to a game seven of round number one. 4-1 power play goal for Marchand. And with 20 minutes to play. Boston out shooting and out scoring. Montreal. 4 2 as Cole Caulfield gets one back. Midway through the third period. Montreal get another quick one to make it interesting. Got a power play. They do not. And time is running out. The clock has hit zero, and the Boston Bruins are going to game seven at home. Would we expect anything different? Not really. Not really. Boston, Montreal. Swayman, uh, 30 saves for the victory. Marchand, 1-1. One one. Pasternak, 1-1. One one. So the Vets come through and uh, take Boston to a seventh game. All right. Again, we're going to jump in. Slow sim to start. And if it's close in the third, we might watch a little bit of game action. Back in Boston. Montreal on an early power play. Slafoski scores on Swayman. Big contract for Swayman as well. He's going to be in Boston for pretty much as long as he wants to be. Still 1-0. We close out the first period. Boston cannot score a late one. Bruins down by one, heading to the second. Connor McDavid been pretty quiet in these slow sims here. Connor, are you around? Cole Caulfield. Oh, Marshawn, though, gets one back. 2-1. Anyone's game. A Frederick on Montebo. 2-2. Two, two. 
Suzuki, though, gets it back from Montreal as they take the lead going to the third period. 3-2 for the Habs. Make that 4-2. Hudson on Swayman. Time is running out for McDavid and the Bruins. We'll jump in if Boston can score, and they do. All right, I am not going to uh, sim, or I'm not going to play the game. We are simply going to let the AI play it out. Here we are, elimination game number seven of the opening round of the Stanley Cup playoffs. 2024-25. Like Boston uh, doesn't have their main line on the ice right now. Swayman with the save. Got the speed set to a uh, four-minute period, so it should go fairly quickly. Marshawn, McDavid, and Pasternik come back out here for the Bruins. And McDavid wins the faceoff. Lindholm over to McAvoy. Over the blue line. Passes Marshawn with the shot. McAvoy with the shot on the rebound. But Montebo will cover that out up. Shots pretty even at about 30 apiece. And Marshawn, 19 hits in the playoffs. All right, top line stays out for both teams. Montreal wins the faceoff. Matheson up to Suzuki. Big hit on Suzuki. Another big hit. Astronaut goes back into his own zone. Opposite side to Marshawn. To McAvoy. Over to McDavid. McDavid up the right wing side. Looking for someone to pass to. No one there. Line A picks off a pass to basically no one. Suzuki moves in. Can't get him off the puck. There they go. Marshawn. Sean, open man in a slot. There he is. Pasternak doesn't get all on it. Man, wide open. Defenseman just got the stick in the way. McAvoy to Pasternak to Lindholm. Valzaka now on the ice. Lindholm. Again, the Montreal defense preventing a quality shot. Lindholm intercepts in front. Oh, key chance for Zaka. Cannot bury it. Lindholm with a slap shot. Coyle backhands on Montebo. Boston not without their chances here. Sticking with Zaka, Lindholm, and Coyle on the ice. Minute 46. Lindholm. McAvoy shot. Montebo blocker save. Savard up to new hook. Well, he's still in. Swayman's still in the net. And that one goes over the boards. Faceoff going to be in the Boston zone. Boston sticking with their second line. Montreal with their top line. McAvoy. Cross ice pass to Lindholm. Up to Zaka. Zach has got some room to Lindholm, moves up from the defensive zone. Oh, no one there to support on the uh, blue line. And the empty net goal is going to seal the deal. That will be it. Patrick Laine, now in Montreal, is going to score his second goal of the playoffs. Still 39 seconds. We've seen crazier things happen in this game. Kind of, kind of bad that the AI did not put out their top line, did not put out the McDavid line. But I don't think the AI considers the players. They consider the energy of them. Montreal bench celebrating as they look like they're going to move on to round number two and upset the Boston Bruins and Connor McDavid. Well... Line number two back out on the ice for the Bruins. 39 seconds left. They definitely need a quick one here. Lose the faceoff. Savard's going to eat up some time here, passing it back to Armia. And I think 
Uh, we'll do it with 31 seconds left. Face off deep in Boston zone. Hopefully they'll bring the McDavid line back out. They do not. Again, I could jump in. I could switch the lines, but let's just leave everything to the AI. Lindholm. And with 25 seconds, Boston needs to break out very quickly. And here they come. McAvoy over to Coyle. Coyle with the shots. Montebo spots that one easy. Lindholm fighting against Matheson for the puck. Wins the battle. Brazo to Coyle. Coyle on the short side. Lindholm gets one through the Boston Bruins. Elias Lindholm with the goal. But if you see the time left, I don't even think a uh, team full of Super McDavid's would be able to get another goal. Quite the celebration, though. Love seeing the close-ups of uh, the EA in-game action. Elias Lindholm to the knees. David on the ice, top line there, one second to go. And that will do it. Time has run out for the Boston Bruins and Suzuki, Montebo, Savard, Armia, Gallagher, all celebrating the victory over Connor, Pasternak, McAvoy, and Marshawn. For the second uh, episode in a row, Connor. And not get past game number seven of round one. All right. Well, as we always do, quite the hit there by Montreal. Montreal, man, what a surprise in this series here. Let's go and find out who's going to take home the cup. Who's going to take out the take home the awards? And kind of kind of disappointing. Boston looked like they were primed to make things happen. Again, Boston will finish three, four points up on the Toronto Maple Leafs. And in terms of league play, it will be Nashville over Colorado. Boston finishing third. Montreal. Well, the Ducks make it in, despite uh, finishing 22nd overall. They had kind of a, a generous gift there. And then Montreal was the second worst team in terms of uh, teams that made it into the playoffs. Okay, let's go and finish off. See if Montreal can keep the momentum going. Seattle will take out Winnipeg. It'll be Ottawa sweeping the Rangers. And the Ducks sweep the oil in another shocker. So two of the top teams in the league are uh, eliminated in round number one, which happens, let's face it. It does happen in real life. All right. Can you believe it? We've seen this before in real life. Ducks, devils. I don't care how much you like the Anaheim Ducks. There's no way, there's no way you would have thought that they would be in the Stanley Cup final, that they would be the team that has come out of the West. Yet here they are in a rematch of uh, the 1990 final, where Jaguar would take home the uh, MVP of the playoffs, the Conn Smythe, even though they lost in Game 7. Devils are up 3-1. Can they close it out? 3-2. Fortunately, we cannot jump into the game of teams that we don't control, but it is going to a Game 7. Here we are. Congratulations. <laughs> They're trolling McDavid, aren't they? One episode removed of Connor playing with Anaheim. The Anaheim Ducks, you heard me right, 
the Anaheim Ducks win the Stanley Cup. Let's go take a look at uh, the Anaheim playoff stats. Vetrano, one points. Troy Terry with 20. I can't believe this. I, 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 really, really EA using Vassie's rosters. Anaheim wins the cup. Roma, 20 points. Zegris with 19 points. And Anaheim had everything going for him. Cam Fowler led the defenseman for the Ducks. Minkinoff uh, also up there in points. And in terms of goalies, it was John Gibson. 16 wins played in almost every game. Only uh, one game went to Dostel. 930 save percentage and a 226. GAA. Once again, the Ducks on this Halloween day up here in Canada, the Ducks will win the Stanley Cup. Amazing. Ducks will beat the uh, Wild in five. They'll beat the Kraken in five and uh, took a uh, sweep of the Oilers. So they only lost, what was that, one, two, two games getting into the finals. They went 16 and five. Jersey uh, beat the Red Wings in five. They beat the Senators in six. And it took them seven to beat the Pittsburgh Penguins. I'm still can't believe it. All right, Connor, will you take home a trophy this season? The Ducks are your Stanley Cup. The Ducks are your, I can't get that out of my mouth. The Ducks. Are your 2024-25 Stanley Cup champions? Nashville Predators win the President's Trophy. Ducks, Clarence Campbell Bowl, and the Devils, your Prince of Wales winner. Individual awards. We saw Pasternak wins the Art Ross by one point over McDavid and McKinnon. Art Memorial goes to Pasternak, two for two. Gail McCarr, your James Norris Defenseman of the Year. Pasternak, three trophies. I hope you're buying McDavid a steak dinner. I'm sure he uh, contributed a lot to your success this season. Michkov, for the second episode in a row, is your Calder Trophy winner for the Flyers. Vetrano, once teammate of McDavid in the Matrix, wins the Conn Smythe. Sturkin wins the Vezina. We knew it would be uh, between one of those two goalies. Georgia versus Sturkin, and he would also win the Jennings, which uh, means the goalie that allowed the fewest goals. Your Bill Masterson trophy goes to Wallman from the Sharks. Barkov, your Frank J. Selke winner, best defensive aspects of the game. And the players of the uh, teams have voted Nathan McKinnon, your Ted Lindsay winner. Finally, Austin Matthews for the second year in a row is your Morris. Trophy. Morris is your Rocket Richard. Maurice Richard. See, I'm so shocked that Anaheim won the cup. What what? We are really in the matrix, aren't we? Well, there you have it. Episode number two. Again, if you wouldn't mind, leave a like there. Uh follow the channel if you haven't already. Gonna put out a couple of these videos every week as we continue on down the matrix. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed it, and uh, we will see what comes as Connor McDavid makes his way to the next team. Where will he be? Well, alphabetically, I think he's got to go to uh, northern New York, doesn't he? I think that's next. Thanks again, guys. As I always like to say, be kind to yourself. Be kind to others. Give what you can. Take what you need. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Wherever you may be in this wonderful world of ours, remember, we're here for a good time, not a long time. So have a good time. The sun can't shine every day. We'll see you next episode. A very
good friend of mine told me something the other day. I'd like to pass it on to you. I believe what he said to be true. He said we're here for a good time, not a long time. So have a good time. The sun can't shine every day, and the sun is shining in this rainy city, and the sun is shining. Isn't it a pity? And every year has its share of tears, but every now and then it's got a rain. We're here for a good time, not a long time. So have a good time. The sun can't shine every day. 